have a news conference on it in a week. Democratic leaders are publicly expressing support for President Biden. On Friday, former President Obama posted, quote, bad debate nights happen. Trust me, I know. But this election is still a choice between someone who has fought for ordinary folks his entire life and someone who only cares about himself. President Biden's... Damn, I can't believe he said Donald Trump has fought for ordinary folks his entire life. That's crazy. Thank you, Barack Obama. I didn't realize you thought that way about Donald fucking Trump. I mean, I wouldn't use those terms. Because we know there's one guy who cares about himself. Obviously, Trump is a narcissistic piece of shit, too. But, like, but like, there is no reason for Joe Biden to be running for re-election at this point. Okay? So, the only reason why he's doing it is because he's absolutely narcissistic. He's selfish. He's selfish as fuck. Aides and allies have circulated talking points to Democrats in an all-out effort to contain the damage. Trying to calm donors at a rally on Friday in North Carolina, a defiant President Biden insisting he's prepared to fight on. I know I'm not a young man. <laughs> State the obvious. I don't walk as easy as I used to. I don't speak as smoothly as I used to. I don't deba debate as well as I used to. But I know what I do know. I know how to tell the truth. The decision is effectively President Biden's alone. At this point, if he dropped out of the race, he would free up his delegates to support another nominee. So far, the president and his campaign have indicated that he does not plan to step aside. On Capitol Hill, there are widespread fears about losing the White House, but top leaders are urging calm. You see a performance that um, uh, gets the kind of reviews that... Uh, that performance got that, that, that would be cause for concern. That was strike one. If this were a ball game, he's got two more swings. Do you think uh, President Biden's the best messenger for the top of the ticket? I'm a very big supporter of President Biden. He's been a great president. After the debate performance last night, should he no. step aside? Thanks for watching. Stay updated <laughs> about breaking news no. and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media. He's, Let's go ahead and bring in ABC's Jonathan Carl. He'll be hosting ABC's This Week later bro, this he's morning. Mad. John, good morning to you. Don't ask him that question. He's mad. He doesn't want him running, but he has to. He can't say it. Two out of the three people they talk to are old as fuck, too. Don't worry, bro. They're, and the third one is spiritually old, okay? That's Nancy Pelosi's guy right there. You can't be. You can't have a young soul and be Nancy Pelosi's, uh, you know, fill-in. There's a thread... Increased number of voters think Joe Biden shouldn't be running. Oh, my God. <laughs> Guys, I don't know anything about politics. Is this good? For a second, I thought him, <laughs> the majority was saying, no, he doesn't have issues. Is it good? I think we can get 100% of the American voters to say that Biden doesn't have the mental, cognitive health, uh, mental health and cognitive health to serve as president. How damaging is this to Biden? What's the campaign strategy here? Well, it's really damaging. I mean, you, you see it from some of the president's closest and most important allies outside of uh, public office, uh, editorial writers uh, saying uh, that, that it, this was a, uh, a disaster of a debate performance and that if Biden continues on like this, uh, it will lead inevitably to a Donald Trump return to the White House, which to Democrats is unthinkable. So what are they doing about it? Uh, well, uh, the, the, uh, the Biden campaign knows that they have to uh, recover from this. You saw a little bit of, of what the plan was immediately after the debate. The next day, he was actually out, you know, 14 hours uh, on the road uh, campaigning uh, in North Carolina, uh, looking considerably more vibrant than he did during that debate. But, Gio, that debate was the most important moment in this campaign by far so far and there won't be another moment like it until the uh, uh democratic convention in august and john you've been telling us all about the text messages you've been receiving there are yeah. calls for the democratic party to replace biden on that ticket ticket even the new york times though the editorial board yeah. there says that biden should drop out of the race is that even realistic and how does that even happen uh, those calls are real i mean for the most part they are coming at least publicly from people outside of public office, like the New York Times editorial board, many of the most prominent columnists in the New York Times as well, people that 
uh, that Joe Biden respects and has been reading for years. Uh, some of his other allies and other news organizations, other uh, opinion leaders. Uh, but, but look, there really is no way, at least that I can find, and I've been talking to a lot of people about this, there is no way to replace Joe Biden unless Joe Biden himself decides it is time to step down. Uh, the big question. Um, yeah, they're having this conversation today as we speak behind closed doors, which is pretty crazy to think about. But Joe Biden is having this convo with his family right now. These pickled capers are kind of bomb. Not bad. Um, French elections are a disaster. Bro, by the way, this is really damaging too. Inside the White House, there are sometimes two Bidens. America saw the other one Thursday night. My look inside the White House on why Thursday left some Biden is shaken and worried whether Biden could do another four-year term. From 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., Biden is dependably engaged, and many of his public events in front of cameras are held within those hours. Outside of that time range or while traveling abroad, the other Biden is more likely to emerge in verbal miscues, become fatigue, and aid safe. <laughs> It's called sundowning, man. I don't know why they're writing articles like this. It's like, yeah, he's old as fuck and he's demented. All right, what are we talking about? And those hours of the day are going to get smaller and smaller. If you look back probably in like 2018, 2019, there probably wasn't that many hours in the day where he like was kind of fucking cooked. He's just losing. He's losing the grip of the grip he had on reality. Oh. The world hates a sleepy guy for real is so fucked. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> He's just a little eepy, dude. I don't understand it. Like, it's pretty funny because we talked about how like mentally unfit Donald Trump was to be president. And it's true. And it's like now we just have a literal dude whose brain is melting. Like, who do you want to have the nuclear launch codes? It's like, do you, do you want grandpa who you don't trust behind the wheel? Or do you want the other grandpa who's like way more racist? It's great. Anyway, wonderful stuff, American democracy. But there is no democracy here at the top of the hour, that is. Because there's a three-minute break here where the those with those who have a subscription will no longer see the ads, and those who have not will see the ads at the top of the hour. There you go. Nowhere do you ever get real democracy in this bitch. Here's the three-minute break now. One is whether or not that could happen. Right now, I see absolutely no indication coming uh, from anybody in, in Joe Biden's inner circle that that is even under serious consideration. All right, John Carl, thank you so much. And we're going to have much more from you later this morning on This Week, including an exclusive interview with former President Trump's longtime what? ally, Steve Bannon, who is set to report to... Why? Bro, what? First of all, why is he not in prison? Like, I don't understand, bro. Like, I'm not, okay, this is not a joke. Bro, interviewing Steve Bannon one-on-one -on -one is literally like, like, interviewing Dr. Disrespect would be more relevant for this fucking guy, dude. Like, ABC News? <laughs> what? Like, I can't begin to tell you how fucking irrelevant this guy is. What are they doing? To present tomorrow morning for defying a January 6th committee subpoena. A new CBS YouGov poll out this morning that was taken after the debate finds that 72% of voters now say they do <laughs> not think President Biden has the mental or cognitive. Is that good? I can't tell. Like, this is good, right? It's a good thing. Of health to serve as president. Here with me now is one of the top officials in the Democrat. Excuse me, it's not 100%. Can't argue with that, right? They're still around almost 30%, okay, less than 30%, but close to 30% of Americans that think he is mentally fit to run for president. Democratic Party, a close ally of President Biden, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, thank saying. you so much for being here. Uh, what is your reaction to that poll? 72% of voters say they don't think that the president... Is By the way, old, time, old fans of the show know that's a classic lock. That's another classic Hassan Abi rule. You can always get 20 to 30% of Americans to agree to anything, in anything, no matter how fucking insane it is. Okay? Always. You can get 20 to 30% of Americans to say, no, nah, Biden is mentally fit to run for president again. He's the best guy. I'm telling you, always. Is fit mentally or cognitively to be president? Well, what do they think about the other guy? Uh, do they think that he has the integrity to be president after that performance? Uh, let us just go, let us... 
not make a judgment about a presidency on one, uh, one debate. Let's talk about what it means to people in their lives. And that's why you're not seeing much change in the polls on this. The difference between Joe Biden and uh, the former president is so clear. If you are a woman and you care about your reproductive freedom and your health, and women do, you see a complete difference between enforce a woman's right to choose on the part of Joe Biden and a, a ban on abortion with him. The other guy. If you care about job creation in America, 15 million more jobs created by Joe Biden, the worst job performance record since Herbert Hoover for the other guy. If you're concerned about saving the planet, you're a young person, you're caring about the planet and its future, Joe Biden, the first person in the Congress to pass a resolution uh, to study the climate change in the 80s, even before I was in Congress, a guy who goes to the, the um, a fossil fuel industry and says, give me a billion dollars so I can reverse what happened in the IRA right. to, uh, to but, save the planet. The list goes on and on, whether you're talking about guns and the rest. And 16 Nobel laureates said when it comes to inflation, if the other guy gets elected, inflation will soar because of his uh, fiscal policies. Oh, shit. Okay. I guess it's fine that he's like demonstrably mentally not with it if 16 nobel laureates said so you didn't even answer the question dumbass she says 16 nobel laureates are you meeting with the prime minister of albania no bro he's too busy hanging out with i show speed top democrats are not pushing for joe biden to drop out at least publicly but if biden chooses to drop out the path ahead for picking up the next presidential nominee for democrats is not going to be super easy if the leading candidate was to drop out of the campaign after most primaries or even during the convention individual delegates would need to select the party's nominee on the convention floor these delegates aren't just pledged to vote for Biden, they are also approved by his campaign. So while a majority of convention delegates could decide to pick a new nominee, doing so would require massive defections from the president's own supporters. It also means that if Biden dropped out of the race, it would largely be Biden backers who would be responsible for picking his replacement. The assumption is that Vice President Kamala Harris would be a top contender to be on the ballot in such a scenario. But there would be other potential candidates who previously argued that they could run a more effective campaign against former President Donald Trump, like Gavin Newsom. So it, it's not about performance in terms of a debate. It's about performance in a presidency. And I want you to know that the, the fact is that the reaction to the lies of Donald Trump is something that mm. maybe TV isn't focusing on, but people are. And to have a debate where you have to spend half your time negating what he said because he has no nothing knows nothing yeah, about wait. the truth on one side of the street on one side of the screen you have integrity the other side you have dishonesty yeah and we we have definitely yo the question is not like uh, whose track record is worse like yeah the voters voted on that in 2020 we already know i was one of them like i was a voter who voted on that right but it's like what are we doing here? What's going on? That's not the question. The question is, he is not getting us across the finish line. Like he can't, he can't speak good. <laughs> he can't think good. What's happening. <sighs> He's like me after a 18 hour flight. <laughs> okay. Like you cannot be like, Oh, this guy is a great, a track record of integrity you're way out of this shit okay he's like stumbling his ears are leaking the remainder of his brain what the fuck yeah bro you're right he can't even stare good he can't speak good he can't think good he can't even look good the fuck he can't look like he can't physically stare good okay i feel like you can't once you can't do that like you can't be president i'm sorry i don't make the rules Except I just made that rule, and I think it's a pretty good rule. Like he's just, bro, he was literally like this the whole time. Doing that fucking Al Pacino face, bro. <laughs> we beat Medicare. You can't do that. You can't do that. 
Is that ableism? Yeah, bro, it's ableism. And guess what? I'm fucking ableist. I am ableist, bro. The president cannot be demented, okay? That's insane. That's insane. That's insane. It's like I'm ableist when it comes to blind people driving, okay? Blind people shouldn't be able to drive. Sorry. I'm ableist in that regard. That's like not ableism. It's just being normal and smart and, and actually competent, okay? <laughs> like, stop, stop fucking tying ableism into like genuine valid rules and restrictions. <laughs> what the fuck? I want an autistic president, not a C line. Well, thank you. Exactly. At least that way we get trains. You know what I mean? You wear glasses, mind you. Exactly, bro. And if I didn't wear these shits, then I couldn't drive. It's the law. And that's a good law, by the way. Okay? <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> good law, copium. Yeah, good law, copium. Just like fucking, you should be able to drive drunk too. You know, I'm better at driving when I'm drunk. <laughs> Nixon was the first autistic president, but he had the back kind of autism. I doubt Nixon was the first autistic president. And also Nixon's autism was like saying the N-word type autism. You know what I mean? It was like he 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 had the his his autism specs were maxed out on the racism front. He was on the other side of the Hearts of Iron uh player comp. You know what I mean? Like 4chan autism before 4chan. Whereas like yeah, we need like a I like trains type autism, which I thought Biden might have actually. He fucking loved them choo choos, dude. Like he was, remember he he looked like a foamer out there every time he saw one of them trains. Like he looked like me. He gets so excited. I was like, damn, we're getting high speed rail. Fuck no, we ain't getting shit. We ain't even getting fucking Joe across the finish line. Okay, <laughs> he just got stoked when he saw a train because he was there when they were invented. Okay, that's why. He's like, oh shit, this is a new invention, Jack. Y'all put these rails on the tracks? What the hell? Goddamn. <laughs> you can put a lot of bad boys on this thing. <laughs> Roll them around. Get some Chinese workers to build them. <laughs> he was there. <laughs> it's a new invention. They're calling it a train. <laughs> It goes choo choo. <laughs> and the Chinese are building it. <laughs> Pointing out uh, the about 30 falsehoods that we heard uh, from uh, former President Trump. But what you just did, Madam Speaker, uh, was make the argument for Joe Biden's reelection in a way that he did not on Sorry. Thursday night. Isn't that a problem? I don't, I don't think it's a problem. It's a bad night. Uh, it's, I see everything as an opportunity. Okay, you want to contrast what these people can do in a, in a debate? It's so funny having literally the second Crypt Keeper. Like, <laughs> the only thing on Nancy Pelosi that is like, that is below the age where you should be allowed to drive is her titties. Everything else is like, 800 years old too like what are we talking about like why is she the one talking about this yes chatters i'm saying she has a boob job okay come on it's just like why is she the one being like oh my god <laughs> yeah i don't understand what you're saying about i don't understand what you're saying about joe biden's age i think he's perfectly virile he's a snapping young man He's a dashing young man. I also am 800 years old. It's like, yeah, you should not also be in power. Okay? It's crazy. We got one. Here, we, we busted out another corpse. Go home. Your husband is having gay sex. Okay? Go home to your husband. <laughs> what are you doing in Congress still? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> They're not even telling the truth. Or do you want to tell what it means to you in your life when this person becomes president? This president, look, he, he, he lied about Daniel. Yeah, well, they're going to roll out Jimmy Carter. Be like, sir, Mr. President, President Carter, sir, a lot of people have said that Biden's age represents senility. What would you have to say? And he's like, ah!
and then he dies on camera. Dana Bash is like, and that was Jimmy Carter. <laughs> <laughs> how old can we go how old can we go we could go older <laughs> they should roll out the d-day veterans again the the, the the remaining eight world war ii veterans <laughs> put them put them in front of a camera and be like what do you guys think about how old biden is <laughs> January 6th, this was a horrible event in our country's history. He was an ins president of the United States who instigated an insurrection. He tries to blame it on me. Yeah, I planned my own assassination when he was sitting on his butt in the White House, not sending the National Guard and lying about it on the show. And Dude, I swear to God, Riz means so much, even in politics. It's just like... I, 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 there's nothing, there's not even anything remotely like appealing about Nancy Pelosi. She's, she's not even wrong. Like she's literally talking about how Trump lied about January 6th. Okay. And I'm over here and it's just like, I'm over here being like, yeah, but like maybe they had a point, you know, like I literally, I'm, I'm reconsidering my position. The more I hear her speak, the more I'm like, <laughs> the more I'm like, maybe January 6th was valid. It's just, it's just, yeah, I know it's aura now, Unc. I know. Aura is important, okay? Like, she is so unappealing. She has no fucking, she has nothing, no qualities that are like, that make me want to go out the bat for her. Make me want to defend her. Oh, it's so bad. Oh, he was sitting on his butt while they were trying to assassinate me. Oh, ay, ay, ay. It's true. It's literally true. It's so stupid to fucking say, yeah, Nancy Pelosi did January 6th. You know, she really wanted, <laughs> she really wanted every HVAC business owner who are heroes, by the way, and patriots, as you know, heroes and patriots, God-fearing patriots. Thank God for our HVAC business owners, braver than the American military, okay? Braver than the Marines, certainly. Are you buzz, bro? No, I'm just fucking tired. <laughs> yeah. Those HVAC business owners wanted to take shits on her desk. And by God, now that I've seen the alternative, an alternative universe where HVAC business owners do not exist, like in Europe, and you, you can get a heat stroke at, at like 75 degrees out here, they can, they can do that. They can take shits wherever they want. <laughs> I love America, and I love my HVAC business owners, man. People, people are, are well-meaning. They, I had one of your reporters say, did he really send the National Guard? No, if they don't even know, then how can we make a, I, a, a judgment about how other people evaluate yeah. a, a presentation? I, so th this is a dangerous person as opposed to a person who, again, saved our country from COVID. The first bill we passed, shots in the arms, money in pocket, people in, in jobs, children in school. This president with his denial and... Ma Madam Bro, she's not doing a good job demonstrating her lack of senility, okay? She literally is like, what is going on? The entire... I mean, I know what's going on. I already know. You already know. We've been saying this for a long time. But it's so funny to me that she's like, ah, 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 he's so good. He shot an arm. Money pocket. School open. Ah, let me go. I'm so old. I'm going to die. I'm going to die, Dana. Don't, don't, no, more, no further questions, Dana. I'm going to fucking die up in this bitch. Holy shit. My take on this i think is pretty sane if you don't trust them behind the wheel of a car you don't trust them with the nuclear launch codes that's it okay i do not trust nancy pelosi diane feinstein joe brandon john fetterman behind the wheel of a car <laughs> okay i just don't <laughs> they're so fucking old man diane feinstein is dead now but i'm just saying like mitch mcconnell's another one Oh, my God. 
if Biden drops out, then there are many potential Democratic nominees. Vice President Kamala Harris is the most obvious choice given the fact that she is the vice president, but her approval ratings are below 40%. So that is one major problem with Kamala Harris. California Governor Gavin Newsom's political activity, including his support for Democrats in elections outside of California, prompted rumors last year that he was running a shadow campaign for the White House. But Newsom has firmly dismissed that possibility. Other Democratic governors who have elevated their national profiles are Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, Pennsylvania Governor George Shapiro, and an advisor to Senator Bernie Sanders, who is a year older than Biden, said in a 2022 memo that he hadn't ruled out a run for president in 2024 in the event of an open primary. But Sanders has since pledged to sit out the race and has endorsed Biden instead. And the delay caused people to die. Yeah, and I, I completely understand what you're doing, and you are making the arguments. What's up with them? What is her libs doing? Look, look at what's going on here. Can you zoom in on this thing? Hold on. You can't zoom in on a video. For I, I completely understand what you're doing and you are making the arguments uh, that you are hoping she that, doing? that Democratic voters. Is she moving that zitter, uh, zin around? What's happening here? What the fuck is going on? The arguments uh, that you are hoping that that Democratic voters listen to about why Donald Trump is. Oh, my God. If I was like. Dude, it is impossible not to be a right winger and be a conservative theory uh, and not be a conservative uh, theory believer or conservative theory. What am I saying? Conspiracy theory believer. See, my brain is fucked up. My brain is fried. I'm not running for Congress, though. Also, I'm coming off of a fucking insane flight. But it's just like if I'm if I'm a conservative dude, OK, if I'm a conservative dude, if I'm a conservative dude. And I watch CNN and I see Nancy Pelosi do that. I'm like, that's a lizard. Okay. That is straight up a lizard. <laughs> what, 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 it, what else? That's a lizard. We're hoping that, that Democratic voters listen to. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? You trying to taste the air? What's going on? Why Donald Trump is, is bad and shouldn't be put back in the White House. But the reality is there are still a lot of concerns that Joe Biden is the person to get you to that point, to making sure that Donald Trump is not back in there. No. Some prominent columnists, several newspaper editorial boards are just simply calling for Biden to step aside for the good of the country. Tom Friedman, a friend of President Biden's, wrote the following. He wrote, yeah. Joe Biden, a good man and a good president, has no business running for re-election. If he insists on running and he loses to Trump, Biden and his family and his staff and party members who enabled him will not be able to show their faces. What do you say to that? If I was Nancy Pelosi, I'd be like, Thomas L. Friedman has L in the middle name, okay? He's got an L already. He was crying. He was weeping as he was watching the fucking debates. Shut up, you weepy bitch. I'm about to deport your ass. I think Friedman is Canadian too, right? I can't remember if he's one of the... There's a bunch of them. Goddamn Canadians in the New York Times editorial board. Be like, shut the fuck up, okay? He said he was crying. You really want to You really wanna take his word seriously? That's what I would say to defend against uh, Thomas L. Friedman. Should... Is there any part of you that believes that President Biden should step aside? I want you to know I came home to California. Uh, <laughs> who's the baddie on the right? <laughs> stop, dude. Fucking stop. You need God. You need to repent. Oh, my God. Yo, Awuga. <laughs> I feel like there needs to be an age of consent in the other direction, okay? This is one of those moments. South and north, and people are for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. They have some judgment about a person who sat on that, uh, stood on that stage and lied, 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 if you're just talking about the debate. I'm respectful of some of the opinions that people have, but I also am respectful of the grassroots. My people are very much... Biden, Kamala Harris, 
and l l this is an opportunity for Joe Biden to go out there and show. Excuse yes. you mentioned your young titties, bro. Have you guys not seen Nancy Pelosi at the beach? Like that's what I'm referencing. The rest of the body is like 85. Titties looking like she's 30. I swear to God, snapshot of just the breast disease, 35 years old. <laughs> that's it. It's like very obviously, it's very obviously implants. <laughs> yeah, she got the Yami Parks. Why the fuck would you talk about someone's body like that? Please stop. <laughs> Chan, stop objectifying women for fuck's sake. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, I'm saying Nancy Pelosi is nothing. She's just she's just a piece of meat. <laughs> I'm saying Nancy Pelosi's qualifications are undermined by the fact that she's fucking hot or ugly. Okay. <laughs> no, here's the thing. Am I being rude and misogynistic a little bit? Certainly. Okay. But I've never fucking said Nancy Pelosi is like dumb. She's demented. But I regularly talk about how conniving she is. She's a fucking demon with the whip. Straight up. I've always given her credit for that. That's precisely why I hate her, actually. Because she was, she was also incompetent, like Dick Durbin, for example. Probably wouldn't be talking about her as much. Dick Durbin sucks. But he's also incompetent. Nancy Pelosi sucks. And is also very competent. Anyway. <laughs> Stop objectifying Nancy, you sexist pig. Let's get to the important stuff, like whether or not she's a lizard person. <laughs> True. Because she is a lizard person. The stamina and the rest. And by the way, while the press, and for some reason they don't, there are uh, uh, healthcare professionals who think that, that uh, Trump has dementia, that his connection, uh, his thoughts do not go together. I'm Not sorry, only. Nancy. You are the worst person to be making this argument right now. <laughs> the David Pacman. <laughs> like, at least David is a good person to make this argument. Because, you know, <laughs> he's not 800 years old. Oh, a lot of people are saying Trump has dementia. Good technique. Yeah, no, you're right. Like, Trump is insane. Okay? He's an insane person. He's a very incompetent person. He's a very selfish person. Okay, all of these things are true, and yet it don't fucking matter because everyone can look at Donald Trump and look at Joe Biden and go, oh my God, one of these guys is significantly in a worse state. Okay, that's it. That's it. Like, and this is what I've been saying day one. And it's not like it's a done deal. It's not like it's a done deal. That's why people are like, bro, please save the Democratic Party. Please, what the fuck are you guys doing? Like, people are... People that care about the Democratic Party's prospects significantly more than me, like the Pod Johns, are saying this shit. Okay, like I, I've I've given up. I'm black pilled. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. It's just I've seen too many of these. I've seen too many of these elections come and go. I know that these guys are the worst. I know that they don't give a fuck about anything, and they certainly don't give a fuck about winning elections. Like they don't. They don't give a fuck about it. Because if they did, they would fire some people. Okay, every now and then. <sighs> it's crazy. He just lies. He doesn't even know the truth. So if we're just talking about mental acuity, let's be fair about it. I don't think Tom Friedman thinks that, uh, that Donald Trump should be president of the United States. And, uh, you know, while, uh, while he may be saying we're... In yes, Nancy, that's the real reason. That's the reason why everyone at the New York Times is literally saying... Joe Biden drop out or else Trump is going to be president. We don't want Trump to be president. That's what they keep saying. It's not like they're like, we love Donald Trump. We want Donald Trump to be president. That's why we think Joe Biden should drop out. <laughs> Your argument makes no dang sense. Everyone that cares a heck of a lot more than I do about the Democratic Party winning is crying right now. Oh, no. This is what we were waiting for. Oh, no. The Camp David summit ended. Oh, no. New with Peter Baker, New York Times. Family wants him to stay in. Bro, they hate his ass. I swear to God. They fucking hate his ass, bro. They're like, no, let him. The fuck? How did that happen? What am I doing here? Oh, there it is. No, no. I thought I could avoid the fucking paywall. Hold on. Press X. Oh, shit. Hold on. Let's try this again. Boom. Hacker man.
I got it. It's Joe over. Nibblers. We see Joe Biden up close. We know how uh, attuned he is to the issues, how informed he is. And I debate with him about uh, legislation and the, not debate, but discuss it with him. He's right there. So in any case, it was a bad. Yeah, you guys can fucking yell up and down and swear that Joe Biden is so good. He's just such a dynamo behind closed doors. It's just not happening. You can't convince the American public. The American public is already convinced that he's not. And at a time when you need those people to be like, oh, I want an energetic person who's actually going to fucking fight the good fight and not a cadaver. At a time when you desperately need that to win, you don't, you can't do that. You can't. You can cry all the way. And the thing is, the loyalists will vote. They'll go out and vote. Polls haven't moved that much, right? That's what they'll say. What? Hassan, you know when you take Adderall and can't speak good, maybe that's what happened? Is that a thing that happens? Let's not sugarcoat that. It was a bad night. It was a great presidency. And that's what the American people have to choose. A, 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 a night where somebody's going to just misrepresent the facts completely and then oh. you're on your guard uh, the other person has to n negate that or again it was a bad night let's move on from that oh. it's all an opportunity <laughs> uh, our our members have have been very thoughtful they're very it's just such a massive l2 because they personally thought because they personally fucking thought that this was going to be a banger Biden was going to go out there. He was going to be fine. And then he wasn't. And then now they're like, just move on. Just move on from it. It's like, bro, you put it together. Okay. The D the, the democratic party, Joe Biden reelection campaign suggested that there should be a day, uh, a debate at the date that it was done at early as fuck specifically, specifically. So, that people would go, yeah, see, all the rumors about his mental faculties declining is unfounded. And he failed to deliver on that. Bro, she's having a stroke trying to explain how capable Biden is. But that's because Nancy's also old, too. Nancy Pelosi, also very old. Literally, that's why. That's why she's like the worst person. She's the worst person to make this argument in general because of how old she is. But also... <laughs> she shouldn't be an off Biden's family is urging him to stay in the race and keep fighting despite last week's disastrous debate performance. Even as some members of his clan privately expressed exasperation at how he was prepared for the event by his staff, people close to the situation said on Sunday. Mr. Biden huddled with his wife, children, and grandchildren at Camp David while he tried to figure out how to tamp down democratic anxiety. While his relatives were acutely aware of how purely he did against former President Donald J. Trump, they argued that he could still show the country that he remains capable of serving for another four years. Mr. Biden has been soliciting ideas from advisors about how to proceed, and his staff has been discussing whether he should hold a news conference or sit for interviews to defend himself and change the narrative. But nothing has been decided yet. The campaign scheduled what could be a critical call with its National Finance Committee for Monday to calm nerves and take temperatures. One of the strongest voices imploring Mr. Biden to resist pressure to drop out was his son, Hunter Biden, whom the president has long leaned on for advice, said one of the people informed about the discussions, who, like others, spoke on condition of anonymity to share internal deliberations. Hunter Biden wants Americans to see the version of his father that he knows, scrappy and in command of the facts, rather than the stumbling, aging president Americans saw on Thursday night. Other family members were trying to figure out how they could be helpful. At least one of the president's grandchildren has expressed interest in getting more involved with the campaign, perhaps by talking with influencers on social media, according to the informed person. 
One of the people informed about the suggestion said the entire family is united and added flatly that the president was not getting out of the race and had not discussed doing so. You get up and keep fighting, the person said. If you enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and thanks for watching.